Tonight, how the NSA hacked cell phones all over the world, Uber's record $41 billion valuation, and Apple says they had to delete rival music from iPods for security. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 228, for Thursday, December 4th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, who recently launched the latest version of its platform, Squarespace 7, which has a completely redesigned interface, integrations with Getty Images and Google Apps, new templates, and an incredible feature called Cover Pages. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter the offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout and you'll get 10% off. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. More information has come from documents provided to The Intercept by whistleblower Edward Snowden. The latest? Well, the National Security Agency has apparently spied on hundreds of companies and organizations internationally, including in countries closely allied to the United States, looking for security weaknesses in cell phone technology that it can exploit for surveillance. The documents also describe the NSA's plans to secretly inject flaws into these communication systems so that they can be tapped. The covert operation, which is codenamed Aurora Gold, has monitored messages by over 1,200 email accounts associated with major cell phone network operators. One such target is the GSM Association, which is a trade group based in the UK that works closely with large US-based companies such as Microsoft and Facebook and AT&T, and is currently funded by the US government to develop privacy-enhancing technologies. Karsten Knoll, who's a leading cell phone security expert and cryptographer, tells The Intercept, quote, even if you love the NSA and you say you have nothing to hide, you should be against a policy that introduces security vulnerabilities because once NSA introduces a weakness, a vulnerability, it's not only the NSA that can exploit it. Well, Amazon has introduced a new line of products called Amazon Elements. Can you guess what elements are? Well, okay, we just spoiled it. Amazon's own line of diapers and baby wipes available exclusively to its Amazon Prime customers. You know, it's big business. Anybody with babies will tell you this. Amazon has, that's not me, by the way, but I've heard. Amazon has priced aggressively by working directly with a manufacturer. So for anybody who doesn't buy diapers regularly, Amazon charges around 19 cents per diaper. That's compared to competitor prices ranging from about 24 cents to 34 cents, like Huggies and Pampers, brand names, that also sell their products on Amazon sort of gets complicated here. So private label brands like Elements will allow a retailer like Amazon or Target or Costco, they've got their own private label brands as well. They can keep prices low. And of course for Amazon, it can help boost margins on what is already a very popular product. Amazon says that its Elements baby products will stay exclusive with a prime membership only, which is $99 per year. Startups like Uber and Lyft and other ride-sharing services mainly target the incumbent taxi industry. But a startup based in San Francisco called Loop, that's L-O-U-P, like soup, is targeting public transportation instead. Passengers can book a ride through an app, but like a train or a bus in a metro area, Loop runs predetermined routes that run similar to some of San Francisco's own notoriously slow bus routes. Loop says that its routes will change over time depending on demand or other factors like construction requiring a detour. It's a lot of construction in San Francisco these days. Loop's current $2.50 to $6 price range has the potential of getting lower based on the number of rides that passengers purchase ahead of time. The company says that it will only hire professional drivers, do its own background checks, and steer clear of public bus stops. Speaking of transportation... Yes, there is more Uber news today. For that, I am joined by Doug McMillan, tech reporter at the Wall Street Journal. Hey, Doug. Hi. So I, every day I wake up and I say, you know, maybe Uber won't dominate the news today. Um, but I, I pretty much just don't get my wish. Uber is, 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 is top of mind. Uh, the latest story is that it is now valued at more than $41 billion. Sounds like a lot, but hey, billions are thrown around all the time with companies now. What's the context here? How, how big have they actually become in the last year? So uh, it's one of the fastest growing companies ever um, by a lot of measures. $41 billion is more than double what Uber was valued just six months ago in their last financing round. And as much as like 12 times what they were worth this time last year. So um, this is pretty much unprecedented 
growth in its valuation. You can see there um, comparison to some of the other hot uh, startups, Airbnb, Dropbox, Square, and Pinterest. None of those guys are growing nearly as fast as Uber is growing its valuation. And really what this comes down to is how excited uh, investors are about the potential for Uber's growth. They're expanding. They're in 250 cities around the world. And this you know, little app that could, this service that became very popular um, out here in San Francisco, is now used everywhere from Shenzhen to Anchorage, Alaska, to Paris, to London. Um, it's popular around the world, and um, there is you know, seemingly endless potential for making revenue off of this app. So expansion plans, obviously, to get in more cities, more areas where they have a lot of potential customers. Uber has also, you know, been experimenting with food delivery. I mean, what do you think the expansion plans look like besides more of the same of what they've already done quite well? Um, they, so they weren't really talking to investors much yet about this kind of idea of becoming a logistics network. I think that they've experimented with delivering things other than people. They've, you know, talked about maybe potentially delivering packages and competing with the FedExes of the world eventually. But I think that's still not quite part of the actual business plan and the actual pitch to investors. Um, I think they still see a lot of potential growth in their core business of, you know, getting people from point A to point B um, just by the sheer fact of, you know, they're in these 250 cities. They can probably do a lot more expanding within these cities. They want to try to get people to not own cars anymore, um, to replace car ownership, and also to get people to um, replace things like their commute. Um, they've launched Uber Pool, which is a carpooling service. So potentially if Uber can try to get people using their app in more aspects of their daily life, whether that be you know, going to the store to buy groceries or going to work and, and home from work every day, there's potentially a lot more business um, for them to do in kind of this core uh, transportation uh, uh, service that they had. Travis Kalanick, who's Uber CEO, also uh, published a blog post today called The Ride Ahead um, and said, yeah, the company has made some missteps. I, I think it would be strange if he if he didn't admit that. But it sounds like really the company says we grew we grew so fast it would have been impossible for 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 missteps to not have been made. Do you agree with that? Uh, I mean, it's hard to say. There haven't been that many companies that have grown this big this fast. So um, certainly we've seen um, a couple of the companies in recent years, Groupon and Zynga, mm -hmm. um, also had some difficulties with kind of the maturity of their CEOs and the maturity of their company culture. Because when you're adding you know, hundreds of employees, um, you know, every week or, um, you know, thousands of employees potentially over a year. Um, it's, it's hard to kind of get everybody on the same page. And uh, you have to have a strong company culture that kind of enables kind of smart decision making. So I think that, you know, it's, it's a little bit um, uh, dismissive to say, yeah, we're growing fast. So sorry that um, <laughs> we're creating all these kind of scandals and controversies because, you're still obviously like responsible for everything that you do and everything that your executives say. Um, but, but yeah, there is context for this. I think that, that, that other companies have experienced similar problems when they've grown this quickly. Obviously, Uber has, has faced a lot of opposition from taxi groups and, 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 and hurdles with the government. Uh, certain cities don't allow Uber and that, you know, that, that's, that's, it's a city by city situation in many cases, but, how long do you think, is it an eventuality that everybody gives in because it turns into such a household name that, you know, if you can't hail an Uber in Vegas, then that's just ridiculous as a consumer. I mean, has Uber kind of grown enough, especially with this new amount of money that's just quite mind-boggling so quickly that the governmental hurdles don't make a lot of sense anymore, that, 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 that whatever the reasons are, uh, these cities are going to have to backtrack and, and let something in that obviously is in high demand? Yeah, I think that over the next maybe year or so, we are going to see uh, continued pressure from governments and continued pressure from local taxi commissions as everyone starts realizing the potential size of this thing. You know, Uber now in San Francisco, for example, is has more cars on the road than yellow cars. Um, so wow. having that really consolidated, concentrated point of demand um, for 
um, and supply for all of this kind of uh, transportation service in one city um, is very powerful. And I think maybe the next thing you see governments around the world start to look at is the potential for, is this a kind of a monopolistic service where Uber is controlling more of the transportation modes of a city than you know any other industry? So um, I think that that might be one consideration. Another thing, I talked to an entrepreneur today um, who runs an Indian um, car sharing service called Ola Cabs, um, who said that Uber is, is um, struggling to get in some markets the local customs and the local behaviors of consumers. So in, in India, for example, a lot of people um, don't have smartphones and a lot of people don't um, have credit cards. Um, so his company, Ola Cabs, actually uh, lets you pay in cash and it lets you order cars um, using a, a telephone, using a pay phone. Um, so Uber has yet to kind of figure out um, char characteristics like that of the Indian market. So I think one struggle for them might be as they can grow into kind of this global organization to try to figure out how to adapt their service to kind of the local customs. Um, that's going to be important for them to succeed as a global business. Doug McMillan uh, reports on technology for the Wall Street Journal. Thanks so much for joining us, Doug. And before we let you go, Thank remind you. people where they can keep up with your work. Uh, my Twitter account is dmac1. I post all my stories there. And we should have a good uh, Uber story in tomorrow's Wall Street Journal. Excellent. Thanks so much, Doug. Thank you. Coming up, why Apple says that it had to delete songs from users' iPods and how thousands of girls programmed the White House Christmas tree lights. Yeah, I know. It's odd, but it's true. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace.com. We love Squarespace on TN2. It's the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Squarespace has been my blog engine, if they even still call it that, for years, but it's a lot more. It does. It does it's very much an all-in-one service. It takes care of hosting, all that good stuff for you. And Squarespace 7 is the newest version of Squarespace and the best one yet. Squarespace 7 allows you to live edit on one screen. You can preview designs in different device modes. You know, there are a lot of different uh, sizes and shapes of devices these days. You want to see how your site is going to look on all of them before you go ahead and click publish. You have instant access to professional stock photography. This is new from Getty Images. Getty is the industry standard here for just $10 each. So if you need an image on the go, you got you got to, I don't know, tie something in together with a really great visual that you don't have on hand. That is great to have behind the scenes. Squarespace has also designed category-specific templates that cater to a bunch of different industries, like music and art and food, for example. E-commerce is available for all subscription plan levels, and all uh, Squarespace templates have the ability to accept donations as well for a variety of different reasons. Hey, maybe you got a school fund drive, or you're raising donations for you know a, a walk or a run or... Really, you know, the sky's the limit. Starts at just $8 per month and includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Squarespace Portfolio, Note, Metric, and Blog are all mobile apps that are an on-the-go extension of your Squarespace website so that you can monitor and make changes from anywhere. And like I mentioned, hosting is included. It's all in one. Squarespace takes care of everything, including hosting, so you never have to worry about your site going down or paying somebody else to make sure that it <laughs> then it doesn't get grabbed by somebody else. Start a free two-week trial with no credit card required, completely free for two weeks, and build your website. See what it looks like. I guarantee you'll be impressed. Squarespace templates are the most wonderful out there. They really they really are so beautiful. We're, we're looking at some of them now. Yeah, there's, there's so many reasons where you could uh, put together a Squarespace website that's lovely. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-G-H-T, -E all one word, and you'll get 10% off. And to begin using Squarespace 7, if you're an existing customer like I am, go to the Settings tab to activate all their new features, of which there are many. We thank Squarespace for the support of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace, start here, go anywhere. On to a few more stories that we're following today on TN2. New figures from market research firm Kantar World Panel show that Apple's latest iPhone 6 and 6 Plus models helped Apple's share of smartphone sales grow in nearly every market against lower or even at some times declining sales of Android handsets. This is in the last three months ending October 31st. 
However, based on regional performance in Europe's big markets of Great Britain, Germany, France, Italy, and Spain, Android still accounts for almost 70% of all sales, with a decline of around 2.6% from over a year ago. Apple was up by nearly 6% to 20.7% of all sales. And this is kind of interesting. In Great Britain specifically, Apple now holds 40% of all smartphone sales. That's its highest level ever. Now, in the U.S., Kantar notes that the iPhone 6 outsold the iPhone 6 Plus by a 3 to 1 ratio, and that 6 Plus buyers tended to be older than 6 buyers. Hey, come on. I guess I'm old. However, in all-important China, all-important market for Apple, uh, the company's share was up by just 0.2 percentage points, now holding at about 15.7%. Though in that market, iPhone 6 availability only started in October, so it might account for some of the lower numbers. The company's big iPod antitrust suit trial has begun with attorneys for consumers telling jurors today that Apple deleted music that some iPod owners had downloaded from competing music services from 2007 to 2009 without telling users. That's the problem. Specifically, attorneys say that when a user who had downloaded music from a rival service tried to sync an iPod to his or her iTunes library, Apple would display an error message and then tell the user to restore factory settings, after which the music from those rival services would magically disappear. Plaintiffs in the case are seeking $350 million in damages in the suit, which is now about 10 years old. <laughs> it's been going on for a while. Claiming that Apple's actions forced them to pay more for iPods. The damages could be tripled under antitrust laws. Now, Apple has countered that its tactics were legitimate security measures. Apple execs Eddie Q and Phil Schiller are both expected to testify this week, and portions of a videotaped 2011 deposition of Steve Jobs are also expected to be played. Back in August, Square bought food delivery startup Caviar for a reported $90 million, and we didn't really hear much about it until today, when it has launched an iOS app for Caviar. It's also a web service, which partners with highly rated, more upscale restaurants. Kind of fancy, even. The idea is for Square to be the exclusive delivery provider for these restaurants and serve new customers and provide a better quality of experience than those other delivery services. Caviar also lets users share links with others so that they can collaborate food requests under a single order. Say a big work lunch order. That happens all the time. Caviar is currently available in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, Boston, Chicago, Los Angeles, Manhattan, Philadelphia, Seattle, and Washington, D.C. Square is probably still best known for its mobile credit card reader, but now also offers payment apps and services like ordering ahead and food delivery. All right, let's talk about Christmas trees, shall we? The 92nd annual White House Christmas tree lighting ceremony it's going to be a little bit different this year. Over 300,000 people, the majority younger girls and women, participated in Google's Made with Code campaign, which programs the way that the lights will move and twinkle and blink on the 56 official White House Christmas trees during this evening's lighting ceremony. The event will be streamed on the official White House YouTube channel at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Google encourages any girl who wants to program something for one of the trees to participate through Made with Code. The White House trees will keep adding more programs for anybody who submit their code submits their code throughout the holiday season oh, i guess the lighting ceremony already started jump in there see if it's cool and that's it for this edition of tech news tonight you can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2 you can write us with any feedback or i don't know story ideas want to do my job tn2 at twit.tv and you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m pacific 7 p.m eastern time of course don't miss tech news today that's tomorrow morning and every weekday at 10 a.m pacific 1 p.m eastern i'm sarah lane and thanks for watching bandwidth for tech news tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com